Palantir acquires Silk, three pretty cool robot projects, Elon Musk wants to build solar roofs, and more. It's Wednesday, August 10th, and this is Crunch Report. We are in LA. The weather is beautiful, but we are here in a loading dock because we picked up the Crunch Wagon. This thing is a beast of a car. An editing suite on wheels, space to dance inside, really, really green. Thanks Ford for the ride. Now for some tech news. Palantir, the very secretive company that produces data analytics solutions for the US government to aid in counterterrorism, as well as a platform for the financial services industry to support fraud detection, has acquired a company called Silk. Silk helps data journalists, activists, NGOs, and businesses produce data visualizations in the cloud without the need for complex software and programming knowledge. The transaction appears to be an aqua hire, with members of the Silk team directly joining Palantir in new roles. I just want to see whatever Palantir has made actually being used once. Like I want to see the real life, like on a project. I'm so curious. In case you didn't notice, Skynet officially went online early this morning. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing with you. While Skynet may still be somewhat off in the distance, we are seeing a lot of news come out of the robot space. Adidas announced that its new robot staffed speed factory will be located in Atlanta. The factory is expected to produce 50,000 shoes a year and will open its doors in 2017. In further robot news, SRI Ventures is investing in and spinning out a startup called Abundant Robotics Inc., which is set to automate apple harvesting with agricultural robots. The robots are strong and fast enough to pick one apple per second, but are gentle enough to not injure the trees or damage the fruit. And in final robot news, Berkeley Labs gets the go-ahead for its 5,000 robot 3D galaxy mapping project. The 5,000 10-inch cylindrical robots, each measuring the width of a finger, are tasked with gathering light from galaxies, stars, and supermassive black hole-powered quasars, all in an effort to add a third dimension to standard 2D sky maps. Robots are sick. Rumors are starting to pile up that the new MacBook Pro will feature the biggest updates since 2012. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman and Ming-Chi Kuo from KGI Securities and 9to5Mac are both claiming that the new device will have a Touch ID sensor and OLED mini screen located above the keyboard. The touch screen could replace function keys and let users customize keys and shortcuts for specific programs. The Touch ID would let you log into your laptop and use Apple Pay the same way you do with your iPhone. Developers could also take advantage of Touch ID to build more secure and user-friendly applications. We heard at TechCrunch couldn't get our hands on a prototype, but we did get a sneak peek at the 2020 model. Let me just grab it. And that's basically what it looks like. One of a kind, nobody else has it. Starting with Thomas Jefferson, the White House has accepted letters from the public to keep the president in touch with the lives of everyday Americans. Obama himself reads 10 constituent letters every day from the good old snail mail. But because bots make everything better, the White House has created one for Facebook Messenger that lets you share your feels with the commander in chief anytime, any day. Rent too high? Send. Got an idea for an Obamacare fix? Tap. Your friend Sandy got on the nerves of her friend's ex-boyfriend's brother and you need to vent to the most powerful bot in the free world? It's there for you. Just don't get too intimate. The bot collects contact information before sending your note. Big Brother is always watching. On a SolarCity investor call yesterday, Musk followed a reveal by SolarCity CEO Lyndon Reeve that SolarCity would have two products to unveil by the end of this year. With a comment, that the company is working on a solar roof as opposed to modules on a roof. Musk said that part of their product's appeal versus other solutions will be that customers end up with a beautiful roof as opposed to a thing on the roof. By creating a product that actually replaces roofing material, SolarCity's power generation offering becomes not an add-on, but a core housing component with a much easier sell opportunity both for new construction and whenever a home has to re-roof. Both Musk and Reeves signaled they see a huge market opportunity in new roof builds. That's the report for today. I'm Tito Hamzy. Crunch Report airs every weekday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on TechCrunch.com. You can also find us on iTunes and on YouTube. See you tomorrow.